Amen. It's good to see you all in the house of the Lord tonight. We thank you for being here. Before we get started tonight with all that's going to be going on, we just want to say welcome to each one of you. Thank you all so very much for being here. What a glorious week of the year it is. For those of us that believe, amen, we are celebrating the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Kicking off those festivities tonight with our glow night, go light our world. Got a lot planned here tonight, it's going to be a great evening, but I think before we get started, I think we'll just give Brother Keith and his team an appreciation clap tonight for a wonderful meal, amen. We thank those guys so very much, and uh, we appreciate you all being here. I am Pastor Eddie Smith, and we are glad that you are here. Uh, for those of you that uh, do not normally attend here, we appreciate you being here. And we have a policy here at Shiloh. Uh, our congregation hears it almost every Sunday morning, and that is simply this. When you walk through those doors, you enter the Father's house, so you're not a visitor here. We don't have visitors at Shiloh. When you walk through that door, you become part of the family. Amen. And we just appreciate you being here. We celebrate you tonight, and we thank you all for joining us. Just so you'll have a little idea what is going to be going on here tonight, uh, in just a few minutes, we're going to turn it over to Erica, and she's going to uh, usher us into the presence of the Lord. Shortly after that, we're going to be dismissing our young folks. Uh, Brother Chris, throw up your hand. All right, everybody, all you young folks, and now I'm, when I say young folks, I'm not talking about you want to be young folks, okay? <laughs> Amen. Somebody reached over and patted Brother Ricky on the foot, uh, leg right there. So. Uh, but all of you that are uh, numerically young folks are going to be going with uh, Brother Chris next door to our youth center. We're going to be having a devotion time over there, and we're going to be celebrating what Easter is really all about. Uh, we're asking that the parents and the adults remain in here, and we're going to be doing the same thing in here. Uh, then they're going to be coming back in here in about 30 minutes and joining us back here in the bridge building. Now, the reason why we're doing that is we're having the glow egg hunt. Uh, and for eggs to glow, it's kind of got to be dark. So that's what we're anticipating. We're wanting it to get a little darker and we're going to celebrate this Easter season during uh, this time tonight. But we want all the kids to come back into this room. That way they can be reunited with parents or grandparents, whoever they came with. Because once we announce where you're going to be going to locate those glow eggs, and we're going to be sending you in different directions based upon your age, uh, so once we determine where you're going to be going, then we want you to have adult supervision to go with you there. Uh, so we want to make sure everybody understands that. We are so glad to have you here tonight. The main reason why we're here tonight is to celebrate our resurrected Lord and Savior. Amen. Oh, it's a wonderful time when we can come together and break bread and fellowship. And whether we're eating a slice of pizza or eating a hot dog, whatever it is, when we fellowship and we love one another. Because, see, here at Shiloh, we believe in worshiping God vertically as well as horizontally. And God said we would be identified by the love we show one to another. So that's what we want to do, is show that love to each other. We're going to invite you to stand, if you will, with us at this time in reverence to our Lord and Savior. And we're going to just invite His presence in our midst tonight. We want God to do a work in our young people's lives tonight as well as... We adults, we need Jesus, amen? We have a philosophy here at Shiloh, and it simply says, there are no big eyes or little U's. We're just all imperfect people in need of a perfect God. So I just want you to understand, if you've got some flaws tonight, you're in the right place. But the best reason that you're in the right place is not because you're with other people that have flaws, but you're in a place where the Redeemer of your life can meet you at your place of need. So we want to welcome him here tonight. Maybe you have a request. Maybe you have a need. You just need to slip up that hand and say, Lord, here it is. I know there are many in the room tonight, and we're going to be taking those things to the Lord in prayer. But we also want to thank him for what he did for us at a place called Calvary over 2,000 years ago. And that's why we're here to celebrate that tonight. Will you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. 
We thank you, Lord, tonight for all your many blessings on us as a body of believers. God, you've been so good to us, and you've blessed us, Lord, in many ways. We look around this audience tonight. We realize that there, there are people here from Shiloh, and there are people here from various other churches in the community, and we applaud the fact, Father, that we're able to cross denominational lines and to cross whatever it is that's written on the house of the Lord and simply say that we're all brothers and sisters. If we know Jesus is our Lord and Savior, we have a reason to celebrate tonight. We have a reason tonight to applaud what the Master has done for us. And the good news is, if we don't know you as Lord and Savior, we can before we leave this place. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this house. Do in each of our hearts, mine first, and everyone else in this room, exactly whatever you desire to do. To those that are joining us through our church that regularly watch us on Wednesday night and become part of our worship experience, I know that they've tuned in tonight and it looks a little different than it normally does. But we just want to embrace them to be a part of this tonight. And we want to say thank you, Lord, to them for being a part of our worship experience. Now, God, have your way in this room. Meet all of our needs. And I'm so thankful tonight, God, that you're not limited just to this room. But you can go above and beyond and far-reaching, literally, around this world. And we invite you, God, to those that will be joining tonight through our church. Minister to them. Meet their needs as well as those that are here in this room. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. And we thank you, Father, for being here. It is in Jesus' name we ask all of these things. Amen and amen. If you will, let's remain standing tonight. Erica's going to usher us into the presence of the Lord. And let's just worship the Lord together here tonight. Amen. We're just singing Christ alone together. Thanks, God, for bringing us together today. What a wonderful time to get together to celebrate you and the love that you have for us and an amazing time to share it with our children. What a special thing that they get to have. So thank you for those that in this church that work with these children specifically. Put your uh, touch on every parent in the room. We all need it. Especially me. Oh, 
Jesus. So thank you for this Easter season, God, and giving us something to celebrate and reminding us of the fantastic love you have. So let us worship you and sing together one more time. There in the ground his body lay light of the world by darkness slain then bursting forth in glorious day up from the grave he be seated right where you are at at this moment in just a moment we're going to allow our young folks to go next door to our youth center I just want to inform you of a couple of things that is going to be taking place here this week uh, tomorrow night we're going to be having a special candlelight communion service right here in this room we invite you to come and be a part of that time a special time in the presence of the Lord uh, we invite you to come. If you've never been a part of a candlelight communion service, maybe you've never been part of a foot washing service, we're having a special service here tomorrow night, and we invite you all to come and be a part of what's going on. Easter Sunday morning at 7 o'clock, right here in this room, we're going to be having a sunrise service at 8.30. How many of y'all enjoyed a meal that was cooked here tonight? Well, those same guys Sunday morning are going to be preparing a breakfast, and I promise you they're bringing out the big pots. Uh, so you want to come and be a part of that at 8.30 on Easter Sunday morning, this coming Sunday morning, and then at 10.30 we have a special presentation. I notice you notice everything has changed up here. And this coming Sunday morning at 10.30 right here in this room, we're going to be having a drama from darkness unto light. And we invite you to come and be a part of the Easter celebration. All right, Chris, if you'll throw up your hand over there again. Ashley, Kayla, throw up your hand. All of the young people are going to be going with them next door to the youth center. So we're going to give them a moment to go. Why don't we give them a hand while they're going? Amen. No. Amen. Can I just say to you that 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 just walked out of the room, that is not the church of tomorrow. They are a vital 
part of the church of today. And we celebrate that here at Shiloh. We not only celebrate that here, but they are a regular part of our worship experience on Sunday morning. We put them on this stage. We're very intentional about that because I don't want anybody to ever think that they're not needed. Now, I know all of a sudden it got really quiet in this room, and some of us, old folk like myself, we say, Whew. but I want to tell you something. Without you, there is no church. Amen. And Jesus Christ said, Suffer the little children to come unto me. That word intrigued me. And if you go and study that word in the tense that it was used, you will uncover some things. And what you uncover is there's going to be some difficulty. There's going to be some challenges. There's going to be some noise. There's going to be some excitement. There's going to be some of those things that comes along with children. But the Lord said, suffer them. Allow them to come to me. And so we do that regularly. And I just think we ought to give them them and the Lord another hand of appreciation. <laughs> to God be the glory. But Amen. 68 children in this room tonight. Praise God. So you see it all comes down to this. It all comes down to this. Just say that with me. It all comes down to this. Three seconds left in the fourth quarter, and the home team is down by two points. The coach calls a timeout, and he sends his star field goal kicker onto the field. The team takes their position. The referee blows the whistle. The ball is snapped, and the kick is up. And it's good. And the crowd goes wild. At least half the crowd goes wild. The other half leaves in defeat. It all comes down to this. You've been feeling well for a while. Things just haven't seemed normal. And the doctor's been trying to figure out what is wrong with you. They've run some tests to see if they can figure it out, and you've been waiting now for what seems like years, although it's only been a few days. And now you're back at the doctor's office. He wants to deliver the news in person to you. It seems like your life hangs in the balance. Those test results will, will reveal a major turning point in your life. It all comes down to this. You've waited for that 20-week ultrasound. It seems you can't wait any longer. You just want to know if it'll be pink or blue or two. The ultrasound technician does her magic, and what a great day for a new mom and a new dad. It all comes down to this. That phrase points to a defining moment. It calls to mind a critical stage in each of our lives. That moment that has great importance on many occasions. In other words, this is what you've been waiting for. Well, this evening, my friend, as we celebrate Easter, I want you to know that this is one of those times. I believe this is a defining moment. This is an important occasion. This is what we've all been waiting for. It all comes down to this. And I want you to see two important realities about the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. First and foremost... It's the most important event that ever has occurred, that ever has been recorded. Yes, Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 8, 
the story of the birth and the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ is a story that changed the world. It is the most important event that has ever been recorded in time and the most important story that has ever been told. Now, his birth was normal, but it was unique. For you see, he was born just like you and me. He was born of a woman. His mother went through the normal process of pregnancy and delivery. Probably even craved pickles and ice cream. And could I just possibly throw in a little Debbie cake maybe as well? I'm quite sure around 2 o'clock in the morning back in Bethlehem, she would have urged on and said, Hey, how about running down to Walmart or Dollar General? Because there's a need that is burning inside of me. But his birth was totally unique. You see, he wasn't just born of a woman with all of the traits that we have discussed, but he was born of a virgin. He was totally untainted by the sin nature that each of us have inherited at our birth. His death was... uh, was not atypical of a Roman execution. Jesus wasn't the first person to be crucified by Rome, and he surely wasn't the last. In fact, the day of his crucifixion, there were two criminals, one on either side of him. But his death was totally unique, for in his death, He paid the price for your sin and my sin as well. Satisfied the judgment of God against sin and purchased salvation to all who would turn to Him in faith. Then, His resurrection. Now you see, that's completely unique in its own right. Well, sort of, I mean. You see, we don't see that much today, but as you read the Gospels, you'll realize that he was not the only one to be raised from the dead. Everywhere Jesus went, it seemed that he was there interrupting funerals. He turned so many funerals into festival, festive events because he raised so many back to life. He even empowered his disciples to raise the dead. So his resurrection is not completely unique. But it is totally unique. You see, everyone else that was raised from the dead, they have died again. Their resurrection back to life was only temporary. But oh, not Jesus. His resurrection is final and it was complete. Amen. And amen. He rose again, and he is alive forevermore. You see, there are four major religions. There's Buddhism, there's Islam, there's Judaism, and there's Christianity. But can I say to you, that each rest on a historical personality, Buddha, Muhammad, Abraham, and Jesus Christ. But over the tomb of Buddha, Muhammad, as well as Abraham, it would be occupied, here lies. But over Jesus' tomb, it is written, He is not here, for He has risen. I want you to think about what the text said in Luke chapter 24, verses 5 through 7, and I don't want you to miss this because it all comes down to this. And it simply says, Jesus Christ is risen. It is the story of the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. Why? Because He conquered death, hell, the grave, and all of His enemies. 
He is a triumphant, victorious, and glorious risen Savior. I have a message that will be presented for Good Friday at 12 o'clock. And in that message, God pointed out to uh, something very unique to me. As many times as I have read the historical events of what Jesus did, and as many times as I have looked into the event of life and death, for the Bible declares it is appointed unto man once to die. Every one of us, I said it this past Sunday, I'm going to say it this Wednesday night, every one of us in this room, we will die. You're going to die. The Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die. Now, many of you would say, oh, but what about the rapture? Well, friend, according to this present life, (laughs) you're no longer going to be here, so the Bible declares it's appointed unto man once to die. You're going to fade off of this earth. It doesn't matter how good you've lived or how evil you've lived. You are going to die. Just today, I had a friend of mine to make a statement to me, and I thought, wow. He said, many years ago, he said, I had a preacher, an old preacher to come to me. He said, about the time my boy was born. Now, his son is now 21 years old. And he said, son, live your life before your children in such a way that when you're dead, because we're all going to die, that some man or some woman won't have to stand on your behalf and look at your child and say, he loved you. He said, live your life in such a way that they'll know that you are loved and that you love them. I thought about this scenario of living our lives and it being appointed to all of us to die. And the word says, and after that, the judgment. But the Bible says in that most historical record, yea, though we pass through the valley of the shadow of death. And I'm kind of letting the cat out of the bag, but that Friday, uh, Good Friday sermon, in that, one of the highlights of it for me was this fact, that my Lord and my Savior took the sting of death. That stinger was nailed to the cross. And because of that, death cannot touch me. Because God said, Yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, only the shadow of death can come nigh unto you because the good shepherd with staff in hand keeps death at a bay. Friend, we have nothing to fear. All we have is reason to rejoice because Jesus Christ lived and he died. But most importantly, because he raised up that temple and ascended to the right hand of the Father and there today sets making intercession from you and I. Oh yes, it all comes down to this. Jesus Christ is risen. He conquered death, hell, and the grave and all of his enemies. He is triumphant, victorious, and glorious. And the account of the life of Jesus Christ is the only biography known to man that does not end with death and burial. This biography never ends. I heard a story one time about a Sunday school teacher who wanted to teach the kids in her class an important lesson. So she got three mason jars and put several earthworms in each jar. In one jar, she poured alcohol. And in the other jar, she put cigarette smoke. And in the last jar, she put sugar. She took those jars to her class and showed them to the kids. In each of those jars... Every single worm had died. So she asked her class, who can tell me the lesson we're going to learn from these worms in these jars? And one little boy. How many of y'all know there's always one little boy? One little boy spoke up and said, 
The lesson is, if you drink a lot, and you smoke a lot, and you eat a lot of candy, you won't have worms. You see, sometimes it seems like that little boy missed the point. And today, let's don't miss the point. For it all comes down to this. Jesus is alive. It's the most important decision that you'll ever make. Not only is this the most important event that ever occurred, it is also the most important decision you will ever make. It all comes down to this. And you and I, my friend, are faced with a choice. We believe in faith and experience a complete transformation of life, or we turn away in disbelief and we reject Jesus Christ. Yes, this is the most important decision that you and I can ever make. The woman who heard of the resurrection ran to announce it to the apostles. And they went to tell others. In other words, they believed and they went to tell somebody else what they now knew. But see, here are some tragic words. They did not believe them. And some of you are going to hear these words today. You're going to hear about Jesus Christ. You're going to hear about His birth. You're going to hear about His life. And you're going to hear about the death and the resurrection. And you're going to do the same. You'll walk out of these doors after hearing the amazing story and you're still not going to believe. But can I challenge you today to consider the claim that is laid to life today that he lived and that he died and that you can know him. A young man one day was on his way to visit a friend named John who lived on a farm. He entered the farm and began to Menander around, up and down the roads that led to his friend's house. And on his way, he passed an old red barn. And something caught his eye on the side of the barn. There were 20 bullseye targets. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It was a round circle. And inside of that round circle was a red dot. And in each one of those 20 bullseye, there was one single bullet hole. He'd never seen anything like it. So immediately, he progressed on to his friend's house and he said, Hey man, he said, who in the world shot the side of that barn? He said, oh, I shot that barn. Where in the world did you learn to shoot like that? There's 20 bullseyes down there, and every one of them, the red dot is knocked out of it. All I can see is a little tree. I don't mean you were off an eighth of an inch. Man, you nailed every one of them. Where did you learn to shoot like that? Are you sure you hit all of those? I hit every one of them, he said. With one shot? One shot each. Then you got to explain to me, how did you get to be that good? He said, oh, I'm not that good. He said, you see, I just shot 20 times. And then I drawed a circle around my hole. I painted my bullseye trimming around my hole. It all comes down to this. Wait a minute. It all comes down to this. You have a choice to make and it's the most important decision you'll ever make. And it comes down to this. And this is the moment that changes everything. Can I just share with you for just a moment? The kids are about to be back. But there is a Savior that loves you and I more than we can imagine. 
We have a heavenly father that loved us so much that he was willing to give his only begotten son that you and I, every one of us, whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord would and might be saved. But here's the real deal, guys. Every one of us know about Jesus. I mean, it, it's just hard for us to live where we live in the Bible Belt. Do you realize how many churches there are in a 15-mile radius of this building? I mean, if, if you don't know, just get out and ride around once in a while. I mean, man, you got your pick. If I make you mad, you can go three miles down the road and find two more. But can I just tell you something tonight? There's a God in heaven that loves you more than all of that. There's a God in heaven that desires a relationship with you on a personal level. Can I just say to you it has very little to do with having your name on a church roll or attending church. It has very little to do with serving pizza at a Glow Youth event. It has very little to do with a lot of things that we do and tie our Christianity to it. Most of those things just make us feel better. I mean, we, we feel good about it. And there are many people sitting before me tonight that do a lot of those things. But friend, can I just share with you tonight, those things will not get us to heaven. The Bible declares that there's only one way, and it is through and by an invitation of the Holy Spirit that invites you. And first, friend, we should not take that lightheartedly because the Bible said no man comes unless the Spirit draws him. I've heard many of people say, oh, I'll get saved when I get ready. Friend, you will not get saved when you get ready. You will get saved when the Spirit draws you. Can I just say to you that God loves you tonight? And He loves you way too much to see you go to hell. But just because you go to church doesn't secure you a place in heaven. And by the way, just because you have a Facebook account, neither does that secure you a place in heaven. Now I know most people, regardless of how they live, how they manage their life. Within 10 minutes after they're dead, Facebook already has them walking the streets of gold and all of a sudden they've become angels. It doesn't work that way. The Bible said no man sees the Father unless he comes through Jesus Christ. Friend, it ain't about going to church, though I encourage you to go to church to a place of your choice. It's not about walking up and holding a preacher's hand for a moment. Friend, you can hold my hands and they become numb and it ain't going to save you. And furthermore, I can lead you in just a beautiful little melody of repentance and you can repeat after me till you can't speak any longer. But unless you're sincere in your heart and you believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins and you're willing to turn from your ways and acknowledge him as your Lord and Savior, friend, you're not going to heaven. Wait a minute, preacher. We didn't come down Ultra Mill Road for this tonight. We come to walk around the yard with our kids and pick up Easter eggs. I know you did, and I'm glad you did. And we're going to get to that in just a moment. But before we do, it's really all about this. Can I just say to you tonight, do you know him as your Lord and Savior? I'm talking about do you really know him? Do you have a relationship with him? Is he Lord of your life? I didn't ask you were you perfect because I want to tell you there wasn't but one perfect one and they crucified him. His name was Jesus. Any of us in this room that would say that we're righteous, the Bible said that we make God a liar. For the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Guys, I want to tell you something. There are some days I can't even hardly stand to look in the mirror and look at myself. So I don't pretend to be standing on a platform and confess to you that I got it all together because I'm going to be honest with you, I pastor this church and there's some days I wake up and I really don't feel all that saved. I just have to remind myself that I believe what God done for me and I hold on to that faith and that promise. And I'm going to be honest with you, there are a few days that I feel pretty good about myself. Usually my wife's not home that day, you know, and so I'm, you know, I'm feeling pretty good about myself. Then she'll get back home and remind me that I've made a few mistakes and so all of a sudden I need to repent again. 
we can laugh and we can acknowledge that we've all failed and we've all come short of the will of the Father. But guys, in all sincerity, it's really about this moment. And this is the moment I'm talking about. The Bible said that it is appointed unto man once to die. And after that, the judgment. Here's the real deal. Are you ready to meet him? And if you're not, you can be. Preacher, you don't understand. You're probably right. I probably don't understand. But you see, if I were to be open and honest with you, you probably wouldn't understand me either. But there's one named Jesus that understands us all because he created us. And he watched us tearfully walk away from him because we were inherent sinners and it was in our nature. You don't have to train your children. Matter of fact, those glorious kids next door, and now a bunch of them over there, go over and pick out the mean ones. That's my grandkids. You know, the local church here, they know that. But they also know the reason why my grandkids are so mean because they play with your grandkids. And so, you know, that's the way that works. And so we can go on and laugh about it together. But none of us had to teach our kids to be mean. It was in them. And nobody has to teach you and I to sin. It's in us. And there is only one way to escape the wages of our sin. And the Bible declares that that is death. But Jesus made us a promise in the middle of that because he knew it was appointed to all of us once to die. After that, the judgment. He said, but I come. How you like that? But I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Guys, I'm going to tell you something tonight. Man, there's a lot of flaws in me, but when I look at what he said he'd done for me, there is no fear. For I believe with every fiber of my being based upon what he said, not upon my own self-righteousness, nor my justification. But I believe if I fell dead right here in this altar tonight and collapsed on that floor beneath me, I believe I'm ready to meet him. Are you? Doesn't make me righteous. Doesn't make me perfect. Doesn't make me anything other than the fact that one day His Spirit drew me and I said, yes, Lord. Can I tell you what that looked like? That looked like a mess. But God took my mess. I'm talking about the ultimacy of anger shut up inside of a human being when I hated life and hated everything around so bitter and so hurt and so angry at the world so prejudiced had so much hate shut up in my heart but when Jesus Christ came into my life he changed that and he gave me a reason to live and he gave me a purpose part of that purpose is Lord forgive me for I have sinned how often do I do that? every single day I want to do one thing. I want to hear him say, well done. I want to hear him say that. And I believe you do too. But you know what his word says? His word says that he's God and he cannot lie. So if I've not done well, I'm not going to hear it. The qualification, because he's already told us, is not the things that we classify as good or evil. The qualification is, what do we do with Jesus? Do we receive him or do we reject him? Now, every one of us in this room have had many moments just like this. But can I just challenge you, it's really all about this. I'm not asking you if you have your name on a church roll. I'm not asking you tonight, do you teach Sunday school? I'm not even asking you if you're a deacon or not. Guys, I'm going to tell you, there are a whole lot of deacons that can deacon really good, but they don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, as well as preachers too. It's not about any of that. It's about, do I know Him as my Lord and Savior? Has He truly forgiven me of my sins? Do I have a relationship with Him? If you don't, you can't. 
okay right now, preacher. Here's the deal. I know how it works. You're going to ask us all to bow our heads. And you're going to ask us all to raise our hand. Anybody that would like for the preacher to pray for them. And then I'm going to get to set my hand back down. And I'm going to breathe a sigh of relief. And I'm going to be able to get up and walk out of this door. And I won't have to deal with it till the next time. No. I thought about that one. And I thought, man, that would be really beautiful, wouldn't it? That would be really amazing, wouldn't it? That, man, I could just get up tomorrow and look at my wife and say, do you realize how many people raised their hand last night? Feeling really good about that, but here's the deal. Our young people are fixing to walk back in this room. But if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, it's all about this moment right now. If you don't have a relationship with him, could I invite you just to stand right where you're at? Could I invite you just to come into Him just like you are? Could I invite you to an altar to pray and meet Him there? Preacher, you don't understand. I'm a member of the church. I got it all worked out. Me and Jesus got this thing going on. My grandma donated the land that the church is built on. Honey, I want to tell you something. I got some grandkids. They love Mickey D's about as good as your grandkids do. So I have to go to McDonald's right now a whole lot more than I want to. But I can go to McDonald's every single day. I can park my car under them arches, but it ain't going to make me a French fry. You can come to church all you want to, and you can teach every Sunday school class you want to teach, and you can do anything else you want to do for the Lord, but it ain't going to make you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Not but one thing. And that's having an encounter with a holy God that's able to forgive you of your sins and change your life. Is there anyone? I'm not going to prolong it. I'm not going to drag it out. Preacher, you're not going to be upset? Absolutely not. I've done what God called me to do. And that's shared the good news of Jesus Christ. It's up to you now. This is your moment. This is your time. Because you see, you can either go back home tonight just like you came or you can go home completely different. I know what I'm talking about. Because I'm not that guy anymore. I don't live there anymore. Matter of fact, that guy don't even exist anymore. Now there are times, you hear me, when the enemy will try to bring him back up and remind me who he was, but he don't live any longer. Because the Bible said I am a new creature in Jesus Christ. If you're not there yet, tonight's your night. It's all about this moment right now. Is there one? Is there anyone? It's just as simple. You stand up and you make your way towards this altar. And I promise you, Jesus will meet you here. Is there one? Is there one? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you, Father, because I know in my spirit that I've done that that you have compelled me to do, and that's share the good news of Jesus Christ. Oh, it's a glorious opportunity to be able to do just that. What a beautiful setting that we have here, God, to be in your presence here celebrating being able to glow for you and go light our world. God, this has been such a wonderful night with all of these children next door. I just believe you, God, that there are some folks next door that are have been honest with you and have had an opportunity to invite you, Lord, into their life. We pray for our children. We pray for those that are working with them. I thank you for these moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas in this room. We celebrate them. I'm sure, I'm sure most every one of them, if not all of them, already know you in a personal relationship with you. If that's the case, we celebrate that. We applaud that tonight. But, oh, it wouldn't be much of an Easter if we didn't give someone the opportunity. And I thank you, God, for what you've done for me, and I thank you for what you've done for others. You say you're no respecter of person. What you've done for one, you'll do for all. I thank you for that, Lord. God, now I pray your safety upon us as our kids return back to us and we're able to have a traditional family celebration of what Easter looks like. Good old-fashioned Easter egg hunt. Nothing wrong with any of those things, but it's really all about this moment. Silly rabbit, Easter's about Jesus. 
We celebrate you, Lord, and I thank you for being Lord of my life. Holy Spirit, your presence are welcome in this house. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can I remind you, tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, right here in this room, going to be having candlelight communion, feet washing. Preacher, I'm, you can count me out, check me off, mark me done. I'm not going to be there. That's okay. That's all right. I understand. I promise you nobody's going to force you to do anything. Maybe you ought to just come. Maybe if you've never been a part of it, maybe you ought to just come see what it's really all about. I've been pastoring here 12 and a half years. We've had communion uh, at least three or four times a year uh, ever since I've been here. But this is the first foot washing service we've had since I've been pastoring here. And I think I'm out of my mind. And I know you think you're out of your mind. But I just got to believe tomorrow night when we humble ourselves... Husbands are going to be washing wives' feet. Wives are going to be washing husbands' feet. We've even got some men that their wife's not going to be able to be here because of other reasons, and they've promised to wash the men's feet that are here that don't have anybody to be here with them. So we're just going to have a good time in the presence of the Lord. Preacher, that sounds strange and weird. Why don't you just come join us? Why don't you just come and see what God can do? Amen. We love you all. Thank you. If you have a regular church home, we applaud that. We celebrate that. Thank you for coming and putting your feet under our table tonight. But if you don't have a regular home, guess what? You do now. And you can go to work tomorrow and tell them, say, hey, I attend Shiloh Church because you were here tonight. And say, guess what? I'm going to see this crazy preacher wash his feet, wash his feet tonight. Come go with me. Amen. Yes. Bring your own towel. Everything else will be provided. The only thing you want to do is bring a towel. Thank you for that. Amen. Why don't somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Amen. Amen. I think our young people are waiting on us, and uh, they can come on in the room. What we ask you to do is gather your little ones. Amen. Get them close by, and then Miss Ashley's going to be coming and giving us instructions. And where we're going.